Okay, so I think everybody should be in the webinar by now or hopefully joining us soon, so we might kick off. Um, welcome yet again to another joint um, Sustainable Minerals Institute at U University of Queensland and Geological Survey of Queensland um, webinar. Uh, this is the third one we've run in this series and um, thanks again for joining us. Today we're going to hear from Paul Gow from the University of Queensland who's going to run a tutorial and how to for geoscience analysts. Um, but before we kick off with that, I just wanted to let you know that next week's webinar is going to be a, an exploration geochemistry focused session. Um, it's going to be a bit longer than the others that we've run. We're going to go for two hours next week and we will publish a more detailed um, schedule of that webinar online when you when you register you'll be able to see the detailed um, session time so that you can jump in and out um, if you put, if you don't want to sit through the whole thing but you are of course most welcome to join us for the whole two hours we'll hear from some of the geological survey of Queensland's own geoscientists talking about regional geochemistry data sets um, that will be Dominic Brown and Joseph Tang We'll also bring in um, Phil Main from Geoscience Australia, who's going to tell us about some of their even bigger scale data sets, of course. And then uh, very excited to have Professor David Cook from CODES down at the University of Tasmania, who will run a session on mineral geochemistry. So going from very big regional scale down to small mineral scale and how that can be used um, in vectoring towards exploration targets as well. And that'll, that'll be a, a one hour tutorial. And he would like us all to stick around for an open discussion afterwards. Um, and of course, if you wanna have a beer for that afterwards, that would also be good. But for today, um, a tutorial on geoscience analysts. So I'll hand over to Rick Valenta, who's gonna give a more detailed introduction to the session. Welcome everybody. Okay, thanks, thanks Helen. Um, I just wanted to uh, by start by uh, paying our respects to the traditional owners of the lands on which, from which this webinar is being, being uh, broadcast uh, and their elders past, present and uh, leaders emerging. Um, and, uh, and again, for, on my part, thank you all for, for coming as well. Um, today's webinar is gonna be uh, a little bit different to the previous ones in that uh, for those of you who've been able to download the data set we sent around and Geoscience Analyst, the free, uh, the free viewer, um, you'll be able to hopefully follow Paul along um, and, and, um, and learn in a hands-on way how to get uh, data sets into the Geoscience Analyst viewer and, and in the process gain a little bit more familiarity with it um, because it's the, it's the format that we've used to deliver all the Atlas entries. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention before we got going was that Atlas entries uh, 15, 16, and 17, um, or chapters 15, 16, and 17 for uh, um, Kalman, Dougald River, and Roseby are now up on our website. Um, if you just Google um, SMI BRC Deposit Atlas, you should be able to find it. Um, and those those data sets are there for download as well as the uh, as well as the new atlas entry so um, they're they're piping hot out of the oven um, and uh, and before we get going I'll, I'll do a brief introduction to to Paul um, Paul did his PhD at uh, uh, he's a geologist did his PhD at Monash University on the uh, uh, on the Olympic Dam region working with uh, um, a, a combination of, of geological um, deposit and, uh, and geophysical information, um, doing sort of groundbreaking work on the, on the geophysical signatures of mineralization and alteration at Olympic Dam, went on to um, work with uh, um, a, a mixture of, of uh, exploration companies, um, including uh, MIM and Xstrata and, uh, and others more recently, and, and has also um, had a significant stint with uh, with the CSIRO working um, working in their group aimed at at uh, developing better understanding of of mineral deposits and and how to target them. 
So Paul uh, brings a, a really strong experience to the to this work, and and along with Nathan has been leading the uh, um, leading the compilation of of the uh, of the mineral deposit atlas. Um, and and Paul's currently the the uh, the 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 group leader for the um, um, total deposit knowledge group within the WH Bryan Mining Geology Research Centre. Um, the other thing that's going to be a little bit different about this, usually at the start of these meetings, we say, um, you know, if you think of a question, anytime you want, type in a question. And at the end, we'll, um, you know, we'll go through a session where, where everybody, um, or where we, where we answer the questions one by one. Because this is a, a, supposed to be a practical demonstration, and you may be running into problems, um, Nathan and I will be here to, to try to answer your questions live. So if you have a question or a problem that you run into, I can't guarantee that we're gonna be able to solve it because we can't see your screen and so on, but we'll do our best if you run into a roadblock. So feel free to type your question into the Q&A at any time while Paul is continuing on, Nathan and I will be hovering around in the background trying to address anything that comes up. So, so please type it into the, to the Q&A. Um, I think that's, uh, you know, and, and as always, you know, please hang around afterwards for, um, for virtual drinks um, and, uh, and um, you know, a, a bit of a discussion session and, and more of an opportunity to ask questions or bring up anything that you want to want to talk about. So, so with that, I think I'm done and I'll pass over to, um, to, to Paul Gao to um, take us through the demonstration. Okay, well, thanks, thanks, Helen and, and um, Rick, uh, and, and everybody who's uh, come along today. I will just share my screen so that we can um, get started. Um, I, I guess as, a, uh, as, as an introduction, um, last, um, last, it was two weeks ago, we, we had, had a session about uh, the deposit atlases, where, where I guess we ran through at, at a more of a higher level the, uh, what, why, why they were being done and what the rationale was, etc. Um, but this week we have, um, I guess we've moved in, into a bit more of the nitty gritty detail and uh, we, we wanted to provide an a, a, a idea to people about how, how we've put them together, um, what, what data we've um, included and, and where that's come from and, and essentially how it all works. And, uh, you know, we've obviously been doing this for the, for the Northwest um, Mineral Province uh, Deposit Atlas. Um, but it's it's also something that I know I, I know I do with other projects that I'm working on because it's 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 such a nice way to to put your data data together and, and really appreciate it in its in its um, spatial context. Um, so the, um, the the data that we're going to deal with today is um, is dominantly from the E1 deposit, which sits about five or ten kilometres out to the east of uh, Ernest Henry, a, a, a broadly similar style of of, of mineralisation. Um, so that data that I put together and sent out, and um, and some of you may have downloaded it and, and have um, geoscience analysts running or, or not. Uh, that's that's a bit of a subset of the data that we put together for for the mineral deposit atlas. So this is what you'll see here. This is this is our uh, our web page where those chapters have uh, have gone up. Uh, as Rick Rick mentioned, we're now up to uh, chapter seventeen is is, is gone up. Um, now this this um, is is the E one deposit. That, um, and down in, this link in, in the bottom here is the link to the um, to the geoscience analyst project. And, and what we put in that is is the geoscience analyst workspace itself, which incorporates uh, all of the data that we put in there. But we've also put in the um, the raw data where, where possible. Um, that that um, we're going to work importing a little bit of that today, just to see how that um, how that works. Um, it's a little bit difficult um, running an interactive session without. Um, Without face-to-face um, -face feedback, but um, but we'll see see how we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is quickly run through some uh, introductory slides, um, just to, to give a bit of background. Oh, okay. It looks like we've um, we've gone onto the wrong screen here. I'll just change my screen. There we go. That should that should be better. Uh, so I wanted to run a little uh, a quick quick introduction um, as as to what what um, what we're doing here. Um, so so the first thing is the uh, is the software platform that we're using is Geoscience Analyst. Um, it's 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 basically done by Amara Geoscience, who are the people involved with with GoCAD. 
um, what, what we've, we've structured the Atlas such that um, the Geoscience Analyst Viewer project can, can be viewed with the, with the free viewer, which can, can be downloaded and installed relatively easily. Geoscience Analyst, I, I, I don't want to be a flyer for them here, but that they have various other um, types of um, systems and, and add-on modules, etc., cetera, to, to Geoscience uh, Analyst. Um, the, the one thing that I wanted to, to talk about is, um, is coordinate systems, okay? So, so Geoscience Analyst is, is different to, to a GIS in that it doesn't work on uh, real-world projections. Um, it essentially works on, uh, uh, I guess you'd probably just call it a Cartesian plane, where your X and Y do not change with, um, with distance. Um, there is, um, in, I've, I've just discovered in the pro version, there is, there is um, well, well I've, I've known about it, but I'm afraid I didn't realise it's only in the pro version. You, you can move um, objects and uh, convert them from projection, well, grid, grid coordinate system to another grid coordinate system uh, within, um, within Geoscience Analyst. But that's, that's only the pro version. We, we, we may do that today, um, depending on how we go with time, etc. Uh, now, the, I, I guess the key exercise I wanted to do today was, was just demonstrate how we pull, pull our data together, basically. And, and that runs um, really un, under, under one, one of the key um, menu items in Geoscience uh, Analyst. You'll see here under the file menu, import. And, uh, and this gives you a bit of a list of, of the type of items that you can, that you can drag in. And that they, they cover you know, pretty much the basic, basic spatial geometrical type objects, points, polylines, surfaces, uh, you know, triangulated surfaces, 2D grids, um, images, as long as you know their, uh, their, their placement in real in, in world coordinates, uh, drilling data, uh, block models as well, which, which we haven't used for the ATLAS uh, program. Uh, and then there are various other proprietary objects you'll, you'll see here, for example, the Amara TEM um, um, IOGAS, which is a geochemical link, Maxwell Plate, I think is an EM um, modelling uh, link, and UBC, um, University of BC, of course. And, um, and, and what I should also say is that there is also an option to import a workspace as a group, which is, which is pretty handy, particularly if you're having multiple people working, working on the one um, project, you can put, put your particular data together to, um, to, 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 to by yourself and then you can give it to somebody else and they can, um, and, and they can then import it into their workspace and, and, and agglomerate the, the whole lot. Uh, so, so that's sort of pretty much the type of objects. Um, as with all work with, with data, um, I guess a lot of us are used to working particularly with numerical data. And, and the golden rule is, um, you know, junk in, junk out. So that really you want your clean data, it's an imperative. Um, and, and that's not just for analysis, it's also for, for data compilation and, and display. Um, so so a, few, a few sort of general rules, I guess, that we follow. Um, if, if we bring um, cross sections and, and maps and, and various images in, we, we clip uh, any, any border space that we, we don't need because, uh, you know, real estate is at, at a premium on a screen. Um, as high a resolution as you can, Within reason, depending on um, on you know how much how much processor grunt you have behind you, um, don't forget legends. Um, you know when you pull pull data in um, without a legend, it, it just tends to, to make people confused and you wonder what it is. I'm, I'm afraid I'm a bit guilty of that at times. Um, preferably uh, using world files. Uh, world files for those of you who 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 may not be familiar with them is is a common uh, method for transferring. Uh, images and, and, and maps uh, that are raster maps between um, between various systems. So, so that they're essentially a small file that goes along with your image. Uh, typically has the same name but, but a different file extension. So um, this is for JPEG images, JGW for JPEG world file. And it, uh, it just basically um, allows the, any system that you're going into to know what the real world coordinates of that, uh, that image or map are. Um, objects holding data values, and, and I guess we're all pretty familiar with, with 3D um, geological and or data modelling um, these days, um, and, and objects typically have, have data or values with them, and, and that, that can be um, one, one field, um, for example, a, a magnetic image or magnetic grid may have one field, which is, is the total magnetic intensity, for example, but um, other, other data sets, for example, um, geochemical points may, may have 40 elements plus other information. 
or in fact, um, triangulated surfaces um, may even have um, multiple fields of, of data associated with them. So, so I guess the rules that, that we follow are to, if you have objects that are holding data or, or values of one sort or another, is remove the fields that are not required. Um, you know, whilst, whilst um, computing processing and storage is expanding at a rapid rate, if you don't need it, um, get, get rid of it. Um, Geoscience Analyst shows fields in alphabetical order. It's, it's a bit of an irritant. Um, so that when, when you're naming your fields, if you want them to display in a particular order, then that's, that's good, to, uh, good to use um, some sort of alphabetical, um, alphabetically derived um, field names. And of course, um, standard clean data rules um, that we usually apply for numerical data, we, we want to apply um, in these compilations as well. Um, surfaces, um, essentially, whilst, whilst um, geoscience analyst is pretty impressive dealing with, with, um, with data and, and it seems to work pretty quickly, you do want to um, decimate surfaces to a sensible resolution before you, um, before you bring them into, into your model. I guess that's uh, just common sense. Um, now look, um, today, uh, most, of the, most of the data we're going to deal with is from the uh, E1 deposit. And I just wanted to, to flag um, appreciation to George Case, who, who did his um, PhD out, out there out of JCU, I think it was, um, with Tom Blenkinsop and others. Uh, and he, um, whilst some, some of that data has been um, published online, he, he had a, um, a paper in a special publication. And if you go, uh, this is the website down here. If you go to that, um, that uh, website, there's actually an appendix with some data in it. Uh, a lot of this stuff in it. So um, he's, he's very nicely provided that. But also um, beyond downloading that, I was in contact with him and he provided uh, quite a bit more. So I just wanted to acknowledge um, that, that all of these surfaces, and, and two weeks ago when we were talking about the atlases, we did have a question to say how much geological modeling we do. Um, we haven't done a lot. Um, I think Rick did some on, on, the, um, on the Cannington Atlas, some of the geological elements. And, um, and, and we've done some, some simple, I guess, grade shell modelling to where we think some of the deposits need to, um, need to better display where the grade is. And we did a little bit of, um, modelled some of the geological elements around, I think it was the Rockland deposit where we didn't have a lot of, um, a, a lot of, a lot of good um, data and diagrams, etc. So, so thanks to um, George, basically, a lot of these elements that we're looking at were provided by, uh, were provided by George. Um, I will, um, I'll, you, you would have seen that slide flash up. This, this um, has, has a lot of links to um, data sites that we, uh, we get a lot of our data from. Um, so we'll put that up at the end if, if people want to uh, have a bit of a look at, at that um, and see, see where they came from. Um, so, so that's sort of, sort of the background. I'll, I'll stop talking now and, uh, and start up Geoscience Analyst. I'm just going to go back to my, um, my main screen now. So excuse me for a second. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, so so geoscience analyst, if if you're not familiar with it, um, it works very in a very similar manner to, to you know so many uh, so many other 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 win other software packages. I guess um, we're all pretty used to it these days. Uh, so so geoscience analyst, it, it has a, a thing called the objects window here on the left, which when we import our objects will um, will we, we'll, uh, start to show in there. It has the uh, the main screen, which works in 3D. You'll see the X, Y, Z um, axes down here. And then um, there's a thing called visual parameters here, which is, is one of many windows that we can display that um, will give us more information and ability to, to modify the, the mainly the visuals of, of various um, elements. Um, so let's um, let's run through. I, I think basically what 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 I'll do is is run through. I guess the sort of the way that and, and the the um, the progression that, that we sort of put data sets data sets together when we're trying to build these um, atlas compilations. So um, so if you go to file and uh, and import, um, the first thing I think we will do is import the uh, the topography surface. Okay, so. Um, We've, in, in our compilations, uh, there's obviously data that you can, you can get from various places. For example, the um, 3D um, 
regional geology, the 3D of the eyes or inlar is available on, on the um, GSQ website. Uh, various versions from, for example, the PMDCRC Cooperative Research Centre projects, as well as the, the 2010 uh, Northwest Queensland Mineral Province project, which, which is, is the 3D data set that we, we tend to use because it's pretty consistent across the, across the inlar. Um, so, so that if you can get, um, if you can get these surfaces um, great, and this data, that's, that's great, um, and you can imp import them straight away, if you don't, there is there is a little bit of um, massaging that may be required or surface creation, etc. So um, some of these uh, pieces of data that we'll look at today, for example, were um, were, were constructed use, using other software or, or cleaned up using other software, and, and that may range from um, from simple Excel cleaning of data to um, to to a lot of stuff we see that George has provided is is he did in uh, Leapfrog. Okay, so if you uh, if you want to uh, Import uh, a file. It's pretty pretty simple. So this this is the uh, the data that I distributed. I have a little bit more here that, that I didn't distribute simply for size size simple size reasons. But um, but most of this data um, is is on the on the website on the Atlas page. All right. So if you get just grab that simple um, DXF and open it, then um, it should uh, provide the topography, which which doesn't give you a lot of um, a, a lot of relief uh, out here in the E1 um, area. Okay, so sur surfaces um, have have their own data. In this case, this surface um, only has X, Y, Z points. Okay, so that um, if we, we we click on Z, it will, will be coloured by the uh, by the elevation essentially. And and for reference, this this is the Ernest Henry pit here, and and these little red blotches I think are, are the tailings uh, dams around the Ernest Henry. And E1 sits sits out. Um, Around here. Um, now, these days there is some um, some great. If you go to File Import um, Geo Image, so we can we can import a uh, an image as long as we know where it is um, registered in in real world uh, coordinates. So I'll I'll show you in a second how, how we do that. But if we, we just click on Geo Image and select um, some Google Earth imagery, so there's there's a um, there's the uh, Google Earth image over that over that entire area, and when we open it, it says, "Well, where, where do you want that vertically?" Um, it's it it doesn't matter so much because we're going to drape it on the topography anyway. But I'll put uh, 200 in there so it's sitting just above the topography. So there you can see the um, the Ernest Henry deposit, and at this stage, this was the, uh, the, the when this Google Earth uh, image was taken. This this was the drilling uh, the drilling grid, obviously out here at E1. So I didn't distribute this, I put it in later when, when I had a look at this, but we'll just for reference open up another, another um, image that came from the Esri um, site. And we'll put that over the top as well because it's a bit more, um, I'll put it higher than the other image so we can see it. So it's, it um, provides a bit more uh, spatial resolution there. So this is, this is the E1 deposit and you can see this is the uh, E1 North pit that was opened up. And this is E1 East, I think it's called, and uh, E1 South down here. Uh, these e E1 East and E1 South were um, pre-stripped, I believe, but but uh, were never actually actually mined in terms of extracting the ore. But uh, this is the E1 North, the main main pit here. Okay, so that that is the um, that that is the uh, topography that we've in imported as a surface. And then the imagery we've imported as, as geo images. Now I just want to um, have a quick look and show you. So, so those Google Earth images, okay, these are the um, world files. So I, I basically just exported this out of a um, out of my GIS. So if you uh, open that up, you will see. Oh, go on to the other screen. One minute. So if you will open it up, you will see that. Um, I'm not quite sure what exactly what these numbers are, but they're they're telling you the origin and um, and, and cell size, etc., for that that image. So so that's that's a world file there. Okay. So if if you're pulling images in, there's there's the world files, uh, and then the other one that we'll look at in a minute is if if you don't have a world file, for example, if you have a section. So if we have a look at one of these um, sections um, from George Case. Uh, we, we have taken the section. We do have some some coordinates on it. So what we are able to do is um, 
is simply um, put, put a CSV file um, in the same, same uh, location uh, with the same name, but .csv extension. And we put in the top left, X, Y, Z, top right and, and uh, bottom left uh, points. So that when, when Geoscience Analyst opens that image, it knows where it's located in space um, and, and can put it where, where you need it. Um, so that's, that's using a um, CSV file or you can use a, um, a world file. Uh, let's see. All right. Now, what, um, what, what we have there is the surface and the, the image. Uh, what we can do, just move that, just move that onto my other screen and picture of us all. Um, so, so if we select that, uh, that surface, okay, it pops up here in the visual parameters. So this is the shuttle radar topography mission data. Um, and what we can do is say, let's drape that, um, that imagery, uh, the Google Earth image on that, on that surface. So it, um, it's probably not so obvious, obvious here, if we we're in a high relief area, you would notice, but that the tiny bit of topography into the Ernest Henry pit, you can see that the, uh, the, the image, satellite image has been draped onto the, uh, onto the topographic surface. So that's um, surfaces and, um, and uh, images. Um, let's, well, while, while we're looking at, uh, at images, let's, let's import a few more things. Um, we will import GeoImage, so it's another registered image, and we'll go and have a look at some, um, some of the cross sections. So as, as I showed you, I've, I've made those CSV files with the, the um, coordinates of, of these images so that um, we should be able to open them up. Okay, and they've been been taken in there and put at the uh, in, in the right location. So I'll just turn that um, that um, surface off, and we'll open uh, the other couple of images, uh, another couple of sections. Okay, so we have those we have those cross sections there, um, and we will then import as well on the geo image the uh, the plan. From um, from George case, all right. And because it's it's a horizontal plan, it's it's asking well, what sort of elevation do you want that on? Um, so we'll just use two two thirty in this case. Well, let's put a little bit lower, I think down closer to where, where it really should be. Okay, so that's so that, so what what we're doing here is moving from um, published published um, information and putting it into into three um, D. And this, this is, um, you know, I guess you all would have encountered this and we've certainly seen it when we're putting, constructing these Atlas compilations is, um, is, is a lot of projects, for example, specifically on reports that you download from QDEX, which is the Queensland um, um, DNRME website where all of the old uh, exploration reports are stored. There's some fantastic maps and cross sections, um, particularly, you know, during the, the 70s and 80s, um, a lot of them were done really well, 60s, 70s and 80s. And, um, and, and, and they're well worth getting into 3D because there's so much information on them. And um, sometimes it's just easier to, easier to pull them in as an image uh, into something like this than it is to um, go and try and digitize all that data, et cetera. So, so that's what we've, um, what we've done here. Uh, okay, good. It looks like um, some of those um, questions are being <laughs> answered there. So thanks, um, thanks Rick and Nathan. Um, all right, what we'll do is I um, just sort of for reference, what we'll do is, is import a couple more surfaces. I'm afraid that um, for those of you who are not running Geoscience Pro, uh, don't follow this. Well, in fact, you won't have the pitch shell because it was 80 megabytes, so I didn't distribute it. Um, but um, we'll, we'll pull that in just so we, we have a bit of a reference feature. It's a, it's a DXF surface. Um, What's happened is it's it's on the mine grid, so we'll we'll select it and um, and just move it. Uh, I should note that this this I, I only just realised recently that this can this um, facility to move objects is, is only available in, in Geoscience Pro, not not the, um, the the free viewer. So so you just have to watch watch me here. I'm afraid. Okay, so that's that's the pit sitting there. Um, what we might want to do then is say, well, we've obviously put the drill plane up a little bit too high, so let's just um, let's just move that one down as well. 
just do that um, quickly so we're all sensibly located. So I'll just uh, move that down a bit until we get to uh, where we need to be. Okay. Um, so so that's a, that's a one of one of the surfaces. Um, so we pulled that in. Um, so let's look at surfaces and uh, images. Let's have a look at some uh, some point data. Okay. So there's some fantastic um, data sets that have been compiled in terms of um, regional geochemistry in uh, in the eyes of in uh, by by the survey. So if we go to um, ASCII, the ASCII menu, and um, and we go to uh, column file. So it's, it's basically any data points that you have where you have X, Y, Z coordinates and then, and then uh, fields and columns, you can import that. So what we'll do is go up to the, uh, the geochemistry data. So this, this, uh, this material was taken from the geochemist um, toolkit compilation. Some of you may have seen that. Um, it's, I think um, Keith Hannon um, and Tang, uh, Joe Tang and, and um, Lily, uh, it's available on on the um, GISQs, on, on the various GISQ uh, data websites. So we've taken that data. In this case, we have the um, data that was collected at the surface. And for those of you who've been out around uh, E1, Ernest Henry, you know it's, it's essentially a black soil plain. I think it's probably about um, 10 to 20 metres thick um, cover over E1, or maybe a little bit less. Um, and there was a study done basically, um, on a systematic sample um, program, uh, looking at, at both um, standard aqua region um, analysis of soil samples as well as uh, MMI. So we can we can pull in one of those. Um, we just select them as points. So they're just in a standard uh, CSV file. Uh, what it's it's going to say is, um, you know, obviously you need to provide the columns that are the X, Y, Z coordinates. So it will be east and north and uh, RL. Okay, and then it, it'll show you what the data is here, etc., and, and what are the um, what are the fields that we're going to import. Oh, Mike, you're you're enjoying the MMI data there, are you? Okay, um, so so that's that's those data points uh, that are pulled in, and I think you may be able to see that we've we've fitted them to the um, to the topography as well. So those those points, let's have a look at that. Um, so, so this is the um, this this is the dump, and, and we cleaned it up a little bit from the um, from the GSQ East Isa um, collection, as well as as the Geochemist Toolkit um, data supplied with that uh, volume. Uh, so, so all of this data is is sitting there in those points. So, if for example we choose um, cobalt and colour it by cobalt, then we will um, then we will see that uh, come up. We we'll just change the um, the, the a geoscience analyst has various ways to display um, node symbols or, or points, so we'll just choose a sphere because I know from experience it's relatively easy to uh, a lot easier to visualise. Okay, so that's the um, so that's the cobalt data there. It is coloured. Um, if you go up to the panels menu, um, is data colours. Okay, so we, we pop out another window here, and we see that um, if if you want, you can. Um, you know, I guess we, we all do this with all sorts of software, but the different sorts of mapping of, of your colour tables, et cetera, to the different um, different values of, of, of your data. So that's uh, that's the points. So we've we've typically in the in the atlases um, tried to include um, the soil data where it's where it's uh, available at an appropriate density over the over the deposits, uh, and also the the stream sediment data throughout the um, throughout the area. Okay. So that's so that's points. So so in here we have um, if we, we zoom in here we have have a surface, we have a um, an image, uh, the cross sections and the maps, and then we have the, um, the points as well. Um, so what uh, what should we look at next? Let's have a look at the uh, at the drilling. All right. So so how we can uh, we can pull our drilling in is to uh, we'll go back to that uh, import. Um, menu that we're using and uh, the drilling is cryptically stored under this ASCII um, menu item. So, so the ASCII data sets you can pull in are either ASCII block models, the column files as we've done for the, for the soil data and then there are the, uh, the drill holes as well. So drill holes, um, it's I, I guess we're all, all familiar with the, the requisite uh, collar file, survey file and then your data files. So that um, we will go up to 
um, our folder number five in our data set uh, is drilling. Okay, when input is done, please leave it for 15 seconds before moving it around. Okay, fair enough. Um, so we'll, we'll go to the drilling. Um, and and I've, I've put the different, um, I, I didn't distribute all of this, this data. Um, so I've, I've put them into, into different um, drill, they're, they're the same drill holes, but they have different information. In them. So alteration, assays and, and lithology. So if we open the lithology, we obviously need the collars. Okay. And the uh, surveys. And then you can either choose um, data that represents intervals down hole, for example, an, uh, an assayed interval or point log files, as we, we often see with um, magnetic susceptibility down hole or other, other analysis structural points, for example. Okay, so we'll open the list. So we have the collars, the surveys, and then the, the lithology. Um, and and they're, they're pure CSV files. You, you, you would have seen them in, in the directory if you, if you wanted to have a look. So I'll just open that up. So there's the drilling. So the, um, the, there's just the standard, uh, oh, wrong screen. So it's just your standard uh, collar, collar files, um, survey files, and, um, and the lift, just the, the, the hole from and to, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So we'll hit, um, if we'll hit uh, okay to apply that import. And then as always, uh, asking for, uh, you know, what, what are the fields that represent uh, locations and depths, et cetera, et cetera. So they are um, set there. We will we'll choose, choose the fields that, uh, that we want, obviously. Um, so hold depth, azimuth and inclination here, uh, they're the only four columns in that, in that file, okay? And then the whole ID and the from and to for the lithology description, okay? So those holes have been uh, imported. Um, you'll see, you'll see it's quite, quite um, dense there. Um, all, all of the collar and survey information for these holes was, was provided in, um, in George Case's thesis. So that's, that's where we've taken that, that, that information from. Um, I'll just turn a few of these things off. Um, I'll turn the, uh, I'll turn the uh, geochemistry off. Let's just rename that, okay? So if you just click on a folder and hit rename, I will just call it um, soil bridger. Okay, so we know what it is later. Um, and I will turn some of these, uh, I'll turn the plan off so we only have the cross sections. Uh, so if we, we then go and as, as for the soil data, if we go to the E1 collars, so this is, is all of the drill holes here have their own separate, uh, separate entry. Um, and what you can do then is go to a particular a hole and if we select um, center on selection, it should take us to where that hole is. Um, so I'm not sure which one it is at the moment, but what, what we'll do is just color it by any of these fields that we want. So for example, if we click on lith, it, it should be colored by its lithology. It may be behind the, uh, behind the cross section. So let's just write, okay, so there you go. So that, that, um, that hole has the, has the lithology, uh, lithology with it. And if we wanna know what they, those uh, lithologies are, we can click on that, uh, that object and it will, and, and this window down the bottom will, will essentially tell us all the information stored in that object. So for example, the, um, I presume that's, I think from memory, that's a porphyritic um, volcanic uh, unit there. Um, and that's just one hole that we've, um, we've colored. And if we want to apply that to all of the, um, all of the holes, we can select that lithology field and say paint on, not just the one hole that we are uh, have painted it on, but all of the collars. Okay, and then I'll zoom out so that we can see that. Okay, so so they are the uh, are the different lithological units. I will just clean up those those collars. Um, what we do is we look at this uh, visual parameters panel here, and that comes up. We I'll I'll take those names off the holes so the cleans things up a little bit. And then uh, if we go back to the, the, choose another panel to look at and we can choose the data colors, 
Okay. And it, it will then pop us up with the, with the legend window. I'll close that other one. So this is the, the, it will tell us what the colouring is so that when we select one of those holes and the lithology, it will then tell us which, um, which units we're, we're looking at. Um, so for example, um, I think if we select this, um, so if we select the um, CP volcanics and we can um, turn those on and off so that we're only looking at the units that we want. I presume this blue, for example, must be cover. Okay, so we can we turn off the, uh, the cover units. Um, so, so that's, uh, that's, that's I guess, the, um, the, the drilling uh, import capabilities uh, we've used. Now, um, we, we haven't distributed um, detailed drilling data sets with the, with the atlases, um, simply, simply because um, you know, where companies have been, um, been, been very generous and provided that data, we, we, we haven't um, put it out in the public domain, obviously, as you all appreciate. What we have done with various, uh, various deposits is take in a lot of the public domain drilling, um, and that was particularly the case for Rocklands, for example, and, um, and, and, and put that, if it's already out in the public domain, we then uh, include that, uh, that in the atlas. Um, so that's, that's uh, drilling. Um, let me see, 412, I'll, I'll wrap up shortly. Uh, the one, one thing that I wanted to show was um, other, other data sets, I guess, that are perhaps a little more novel. Um, and, and one of those is the um, TEMA data set that um, the CSIRO ran a project to uncover Cloncurry where they looked at a lot of deposits and collected some, um, some TEMA um, mineralogy data, which I will show you what, uh, what, what the outputs look like. If you go up to um, that collection of data, and if you go to uh, folder seven, CSIRO, um, and TMA images, okay, then uh, and open one of those, you will see uh, what, what they look like. So um, essentially it's a mineral map. I, I think these are on, on small um, slabs of rock, I think one or two centimetres um, wide, and, uh, and it's basically giving us the mineralogy and the, the texture. So in this case, you can see it's, it's dominantly microcline, um, with it looks like um, a, a lot of biotite, these brown clots. Uh, the matrix looks like it's, it's probably, um, it's a bit hard to tell on the colours here, um, but, but you can see that the, the matrix is this, this grey colour, maybe it's the um, oh, quartz, sorry, right up the top, most abundant mineral. And these blue flecks here are um, either hem they're probably hematite and, uh, and magnetite. Um, so, so really, really informative um, images. Um, Sorry, I can sit here looking at these all day. This this is another. So so you can see in this in this case you you have albite um, the albite you'd almost call them class that have been um, that have been cut by these uh, probably quartz quartz veins. It's it's grey and pink quartz muscovite veins cutting these these class of uh, of albite. Um, so so there's there's so much to see and it's it's so interesting in terms of providing the uh, I guess the well the mineral parogenesis, the mineral relationships and, and the, the mineral analysis itself. Um, but, but what we've done, if I can uh, go back, is we have, have taken the same process of um, assigning those images uh, 3D coordinates so that we, we can actually look at them in the context of the, of the deposit. So if we go back to the import menu and we uh, go to geo image, um, then let's go to the CSIRO TEMA images and what we can do, there's a whole bunch of them here. I won't, won't import them all now, I'll just import say here. Yeah. It's like 18. Okay, so if we open them, unfortunately, um, GeoScience Analyst zooms to every, any object that is, is imported. So, so that's what it was doing there, was scuttling around those different, um, different, different locations of those images. So you can, you can see where those, where those images are actually uh, located in space. I'll just click the um, hit there and uh, go to visual parameters. Okay, so visual parameters controls how it looks and there is a transparency um, uh, item here so that we'll turn it off a little bit. And then what we can also do is under, under import is go back to ASCII drill holes. Okay, don't worry if you, you can't follow this um, I, I think that this will be um, posted online 
any way, uh, so that's that's not an issue. So if we we go to Syro and we will just load in those columns and uh, and surveys. I'll just do this quickly so um, you can see it. Okay, I think that all looks good. Okay, so we can actually see the the drill holes that that uh, that, that data has has come from. So it's 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 really nice to have that that information in a uh, in a spatial context. Okay, and I, I didn't import any of the the, um, the mineral images from these other holes. Okay. Um, I I think I'll just import two other things now. One ha has the slightly the same issue, but I'm going to import it because it's it's absolutely spectacular to see. It is the um, it is, and, and this, this data is, is, in, the, uh, is in the online uh, version. Um, it is essentially, if we go to um, George Case's uh, grade shells, he's put a whole bunch together, and I'll, I'll just import it because it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive. It really shows you how the, uh, how, how, the, how the copper grade sits through this system. Apologies again, it is, um, I'll just pull that down again. So, so this this is is essentially where the grade sits, and I've just pulled it up because it's it's very spectacular. If, if you have a look at this, um, at this this is this is the uh, what is it the 0.25 up shell, and you, you can see it's sitting in, in the in the hinge of this sim form down here, right? in, in all, almost I, I presume it's uh, it's almost um, lithologically controlled, stratigraphically controlled through through here. It's a, it's, a, it's very impressive um, modeling through there. And then, then the other mineralization of E1. If you hold down the C key and press on anything, okay, so if I hold down the C key and click, it will then become the center of your, your field. Okay, so, so up, up at E1 north, you can see that the, um, that the, that the mineralization sits in this, in this empty form as well. So it's, um, it's a very, very impressive model from that, that drill database that, uh, that George has done. Um, okay, final item I wanted to import simply also because it's it's pretty interesting is the um, geophysical data. Okay, I'll, I'll import I'll import two things. Firstly, um, importing again a, a, a geo image, and up in uh, folder nine is the regional aeromagnetic data. Okay. And we'll just pop it on there, so you can see that this is the drilling out around um, out around uh, E1, and and this this is the sin form that hosts uh, E1 South, and then the anti form up at E1 North. Uh, this big magnetic blob up here is uh, is Ernest Henry, so I just wanted to suck in the um, Mount Isa's own Maradona, the hand of God. If you haven't seen it, it's very interesting. I don't quite understand it. It's one of those things like um, I just those lineaments through, um, through through Olympic Dam that, that that's there, and, and I don't think we quite understand it, but um, but it's interesting all the same. Okay, so so this this is the I think it's the one ohm meter um, data surfaces from the uh, the MT survey that was done out uh, out here around the uh, district, and there's there's the um, there's the Ernst Henry deposit there. Sitting up, up above the above the top of this um, this little finger here, so so quite quite interesting. Um, okay, so time is is four twenty, and I apologise, but there's one more thing that I would I would like to like to show you. I um, there's there's been a big high logger program going on uh, in north northwest Queensland by the GSQ, um, and so what I've done is put together some of that data um, for just for one hole in geoscience analysts because I think it's a really nice way to, to have a look at the data. Um, I haven't distributed this, I only put it together um, this morning, but um, geoscience analyst has a facility to Im import another geoscience analyst workspace as a group. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so I've saved it here as, as EH550, high logger, it's the drill hole, so we'll pull that in. Okay, oh, that's good. Oh, it's having a think. I hope it's having just a think. It's pretty, pretty heavy, heavy data. Okay, 
I'll turn off that um, that image of the magnetic data, and I'll turn off the um, the MT as well. Okay. So so this is this is the uh, Ernest Henry deposit. What we've done is is taken the um, taken the, the, the grade contours from a, from a set of plans that were out in the presentation a, um, quite a while ago and built a um, simple shell in leapfrog around that. Um, this will be it. So I'll turn the slices off so we just have the shell. And this is drill hole um, EH550. Um, uh, I'll just select that uh, and it'll change its colour to white or something so you can see it. Okay. All right. So that's the um, that's, that's drill hole EH550. And what, what we've done here is take the, I'll click on C and click to make this the center. So that what, what we've done here is import the um, high log data, which is, which is available on uh, OzGin uh, on, online. I'll, I'll put that, um, I'll put that uh, link up a little bit later. Um, so, so and, and this is one of the beauties of, of just science analyst is, is how quick it is on the fly. So you saw that we imported this, this um, data for this hole and you can see that it is reasonably high resolution imagery from, I think that's about 800 metres worth of, worth of drill hole, um, as well as all the high log of data that comes along with it. So if, if we, um, we, I'll just zoom in a little there. So what, what we're seeing here is, um, obviously, the, um, the, the high-resolution line scan data, which is essentially core high-resolution core photos from, from the high logger, and then I've put in in plots um, different different um, minerals that have, have come out of the high logger. So that if we um, select them, let me see. I'm just looking for where they came in. TSG plots, uh, probably mineralogy. Okay. So that if if we come down here, I put them as profiles. So uh, so the green, for example, is, is albite. So you can see that the uh, the albite is very rich in the top of the hole. Uh, the blue is um, calcite from the shortwave infrared uh, high logger data. So you can you can see where the um, where, where the calcite is. It's typically uh, associated with the with the mineralization. So if, if if we zoom in there, um, you can see this blue is is high calcite. And uh, when you when you come in, you can you can see this is very typical. Um, very typical calcite. Uh, no, it's not so much obvious there, but you, you'll see that the very common calcite um, veining that, um, and they're, they're called bird's wing textures that you see. Uh, I have understand it. I'll leave you to, to have a bit of a look um, yourself there. Oh, okay. So you can see you see you see these um, calcite, calcite, I guess, small ten tension veins that have, have developed, I presume, due to over fluid overpressure in main. Um, so, so that's the core, and, and then we have all of that high logger mineralogy in down the hole, as well as we don't do this so much anymore. But these these are the um, these are these are the, the high logger plots of, of the um, minerals that you see come out of our test software, the Spectral Geologist, which is the free uh, free high logger um, software. Uh, so I just wanted to um, to put that up because it's it's pretty interesting. This is one hole from Ernest Henry, but there are. Um, so many um, holes available now, and high log data, particularly Northwest Queensland through the GSQs initiative, is becoming pretty, um, pretty prevalent. Um, okay, I can see that um, time has ticked on. We've been talking for nearly an hour, so I will, um, I will leave it there. What I will do is just pop up um, the um, list of all of those. Um, I'll stop sharing this screen. And I will just share uh, my second screen so that you can. This this is a uh, a list of the sources of um, data, or not exhaustive certainly, but um, but some of the, some of the sources of, of of data that we've used to to acquire the data. And you know, it's there's so much so much information out there that um, that doesn't get used. And I guess part of the rationale behind behind the, these um, two science analyst projects is is to, to to put some of that data together so it's very easily. Um, accessible yeah um, okay I will um, I will leave it there um, Rick and Helen if you uh, would like to uh, wrap up or, or lead any commentary